the best advice is if you're not doing video, pull out your cell phone, uh, put it on a tripod, prop it up with some books, or you know, go get a get selfie a stick. Yeah, or a friend, and just just start creating that content because bad content is better than no content when it comes to video and yeah. marketing yourself. Welcome to How to Real Estate Podcast, a podcast to help you start, elevate, and catapult your real estate investing career. Don't forget to like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new podcast that we post every single Monday. Jared tested. Jenna approved. Hello, podcast world. This is Jared, and this is How to Real Estate Podcast. And today, with the, I have this me, Jared Brenchley, and Janet Omen. Janet Omen. Uh, we're real estate professionals and realtors. And today, our guest is someone that started with with uh, nothing in 18 months, built his business to a nine person crew. Um, he's done over a hundred uh, real estate uh, projects uh, for for photography, and is also launching a filmmaker business boot camp. Uh, here in the next few months or so. So we have Marcus C. So Marcus, how's it going? It's going well. Thanks for uh, having me on your podcast. Awesome. Well, we're really glad to have have you here. We're, we're this this podcast. We want to have a lot of people from different uh, point of views, different uh, uh, experience in the real estate field. Uh, so um, just just uh, want to know a little bit about um, for other real estate professionals that are you know trying to list their uh, their properties or they're trying to sell their properties. Uh, what are some of the things that you've worked on? What are some tips you would recommend uh, th- these, these other guys to do? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I, think, uh, I think what we need to get away from is the, the whole idea of representing the properties over mm-hmm. representing the individual. So it's not necessarily about, you know, listing the, the property appropriately. It's about, you know, marketing the realtor uh, app- app- appropriately, if that makes sense. And how would they do that? So, you know, uh, Facebook and Instagram social media is a huge thing right now uh, for for marketing individuals or businesses. Uh, Video is definitely one of the up and coming things and that everybody kind of needs. It's the new print advertising. And so by utilizing, you know, Facebook live features or the Instagram stories or even having uh, paid content created so you can actually, you know, put it in newsletters on your website and things like that, mm. that's, a, that's a great way to, to stay ahead of the game and differentiate yourself from these uh, other realtors that are more traditional and not necessarily using video. Okay. And, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and this is in a broad sense, not when somebody has, a, let's say, a listing that they want to promote. You're just talking in general. Um, you, as an agent, you want to be able to promote yourself so that when you do get a listing, it's a little. You have you already have the network out there, people following you. People know what you're doing, and so when you do have a listing, you're not marketing the listing. You're, it's already marketed because it's with you. Absolutely, and and we always like to tell uh, anybody in the real estate industry that their reputation is what people see. It's not what they're selling. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, if you if your reputation includes amazing video, uh, great headshots, uh, great marketing, then that just kind of goes along with how they perceive you'll treat your listings, uh, either right. as a buyer or a seller. And on top of that, um, it it helps you build a, a wider network. I mean, more people are going to want to talk to you if you're more professional and you have more marketing out there, uh, which makes it easier to find buyers or find sellers or, or, or whatever you're looking for. Right. So uh, that that's that's really good. What would you recommend with someone that's maybe not a realtor, but they're still a real estate investor? So how would they market themselves the exact same way as a, as a realtor would or not exact, but... What what would what would the difference be in your in your mind? Well, I see a lot of these uh, you know these signs on the side of the road that says uh, real estate investor looking for a, a student or you know spend my money or, or whatever. And I think uh, I think for me personally that raises a lot of red flags, scams or, or whatever. And I'm not saying that real estate investing isn't a, a viable option to make money. I know it is, yeah. but those types of marketing really scream to me like, hey, somebody's going to take advantage of me. I'm yeah. not taking advantage of them. Uh, so by by creating content that is going to help educate people about the the investment process or what to expect uh, and having an actual face attached to it, I think is huge. Uh, having a sign that's handwritten, it could be anybody, it could be a homeless person, yeah. it could be, I could be putting those signs out right. uh, and saying I'm a real estate investor 
or if I had a video or if a real estate investor has a video that shows their face, that's way more approachable as well as you're going to start building that trust with those individuals. Like you're doing these YouTube videos where your face is there. People get to know you without ever talking to you. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So uh, just pre professionalism. That's kind of... Absolutely. I mean, I don't think that uh, you should market any, any different way than one of these big corporate companies does you know they need to build trust in their clients and in their in their product and it, it's the same thing just because you're one person or maybe a team of investors it doesn't mean that your marketing should be any less mm. so what would you do let's just say i'm a brand new investor uh, i want to market myself i don't have a ton of money to pay someone professional just like you that can do awesome amazing things um what what would you recommend for that new investor to do to start marketing themselves Everybody has a cell phone. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. The, that's the number one thing. Um, Facebook Live is a, a feature that I, I feel like even right now is underused. Um, as far as professional productions go, everybody sees these videos on Facebook and on YouTube and on Instagram that are filmed with a cell phone. They're shaky. Uh, they're portrait mode instead of yeah. landscape. Right. You know, uh, They'll make you seasick, but that's just the expectation. And having something like that is still better than not having anything at all. I think it makes you stop too when you're scrolling through your social media and you see a video that's raw like that. It, it captures people's attention. Mm. I've noticed. Yeah, there's there's definitely pros and cons mm -hmm. to the uh, quote unquote professional video approach. Um, sometimes they they look more like a sale, and yeah. nobody wants to watch that. Uh, other times, you know, they might have graphics that you don't necessarily put on there when you're doing a live video. So there's pros and cons, um, but. The best advice is if you're not doing video, pull out your cell phone, uh, put it on a tripod, prop it up with some books, or you know, go get a get selfie a stick. Yeah, or a friend, and just just start creating that content because bad content is better than no content when it comes to video and yeah. marketing yourself. Yeah. Bad content, with the exception of like, don't do inappropriate <laughs> things. Right, bad right. content. You know. So I have to wear clothes. Just saying. Okay, got it. Cats, my next video plan. Uh, uh, do you so, want me to put my shirt back on? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, w with that being, so that there, w what what platforms would you recommend this this new person, whether it's a new realtor uh, that doesn't have a ton of deals behind them, but they want to get themselves out there, or a brand new investor, uh, what platforms would they would you recommend putting themselves out there? So definitely, you know, Facebook and Instagram, the two biggest ones right now. Um, YouTube is great as well. Uh, it's harder to get a following on YouTube. Um, people go to YouTube to search specific things, whereas Facebook, people share stuff. Uh, same thing with Instagram. Um, my biggest piece of advice would be upload the videos specifically to each platform. Like Facebook hates YouTube, YouTube hates Facebook. Mm -hmm. So if you link a yeah. YouTube video to Facebook, Facebook's going to drop you in that algorithm, and so nobody's going to see it. Uh, as well as you know, you don't you don't go to Instagram and put a YouTube video on there. Right. Uh, so taking advantage of these free social networks is fantastic. LinkedIn is another one where a lot of people are starting to put videos out. Mm. Um, it's more of a, a corporate thing, but I guess if you're an investor or a real estate agent. I think it's growing, too. Yeah, it's, uh, LinkedIn is a fantastic resource. Yeah, so LinkedIn, I don't know, it's just, I, I haven't had a ton of experience with LinkedIn, so my ignorance will totally show here. But, uh, so it, it's a growing network, it's a growing platform that I just kind of, I don't know. Well, it's been around for a little while. Yeah, And uh, I think in the beginning it was used mainly as like an online resume, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was used as an online resume so to speak, and now uh, a lot of people are networking and putting content on uh, LinkedIn and connecting. Yeah, absolutely. And LinkedIn, um, to be honest, I haven't been active on LinkedIn in a couple of years, but I started a LinkedIn profile probably back in like 2012 when it was first becoming a thing. And I was I was thinking, man, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to be ahead of the game. And at the time, it, w it was very much a, an online resume to build credibility. Mm -hmm. People could recommend you for certain skills or certain products or certain advice. Um, you could put up white papers. You could put your resume on there. Uh, and, and it was really the serious professionals were the yes. ones that were really looking at it. Uh, nowadays, you know, the serious professionals are still the ones that are on there, but there's a slew of sales individuals on there as well. LinkedIn offers some, some ways for people to buy leads and all that fun stuff, but it still doesn't mean you shouldn't have a good, you know, a good profile on LinkedIn, video right. and, and, you know, uh, And resumes. why not? If you're doing it on, on other platforms, it's not 
that much more of a step to just put it on LinkedIn as well. For sure, and LinkedIn LinkedIn is just as easy to to update as Facebook, if not mm -hmm. easier, uh, and it reaches a, a completely different market. Right. So you're you're reaching these professionals that mm. are CEOs and things, people that might want to invest. You know, they have right. money. Okay. So this would be a the LinkedIn would be a good good tool for trying to find the money partners or not necessarily finding a house to purchase per, per se, right? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't assume that most people have LinkedIn. Right. So I would I would assume that they're gonna if they, if you have an investment property that you want to sell, mm -hmm. I would for me I would probably put it on like KSL. I wouldn't right. put it on LinkedIn. Right. What do you think of TikTok? <laughs> uh, TikTok and Vine and Music yeah. dot Ly and. Well, Musical.ly became TikTok. I know, but but that came from Vine, and yeah. you know they're all the same company. Um, I I have no opinion on it. Like from what I've seen, it's it's mostly individuals who probably aren't in the uh, the stage of life to purchase a uh, a property or to right. flip one. Um, saying it as you know diplomatically as I can, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do know some individuals. Uh, they utilize it to to build a, a personal following, not necessarily around uh, an industry or a profession, but more like, hey, this is what's going on in my life. This is my family, you know, and just doing the one-off stuff. So you can build your your uh, what is it? Your SOI, yeah, sphere of influence, right? You can build that through TikTok, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily use that as a marketing tool. Like I've never seen somebody like, oh yeah, check out my TikTok. <laughs> That'd be weird. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're gonna be the first. <laughs> my my daughter just started her TikTok yesterday. She she made an account. My ten year old. Uh, okay, whatever. Well, <laughs> monitor that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. It's scary. How often do you think so? So for that new investor, that new realtor, or even people that have experience but they're trying to build that brand, so they don't have to do so much work every listing or do so much work on finding the deals or whatever it may be. Um, how often do you think they should like post something? And should it be kind of should they plan out like okay every every week I'm going to post something it's going to be on this trajectory or what what would you recommend? How so often? so what we always recommend especially with uh, a series of videos or um, an educational class is you set that time and you say hey every Wednesday at 6 p.m. I'm going to post a video relating to uh, the investment process or every Tuesday at five we're going to talk about how to. How, how to locate an investment property or what, you know, the due diligence you need to do. Um, and so that will set that expectation. Uh, and then you go out and you create a series of videos all within a day or two. And one thing we like to do is if we're going to film it, we'll actually have the person change outfits like between each video so yeah. then they can post them and it looks right. more natural. But you're able to actually uh, take all of that content, break it down really easily into a you know step-by-step -step guide, and then just upload one video per week for six or eight weeks. And then after that six or eight weeks is done, you can actually restart that same series for the people that missed the first one. Mm. So, wow, so all that's done in a day? You record the whole day and just break up the, the video, I guess, into different, or do you, how does that work typically? Let's say you do have, um, um, a series that you want to put out okay. in six to eight weeks. So let's say let's say we're going to say a uh, home buyer series, mm -hmm. right? All the different steps regarding ho buying a home. Uh, the first one, we'll, we'll actually sit down and write out a a course, uh, a plan, and say, hey, here's the the five things that they need to know, and we're going to say how long will each one of these take? Maybe fifteen minutes, maybe five minutes, depending on the the lesson. And then what we'll do is we'll actually film all of those and we'll film uh, an intro and an outro for each one. So, hey, tune in next week for step number two of the home buying process. Hey, welcome to step number two of the home buying process, blah, blah, blah. And then, hey, tune in next week for step number three. And so we're actually able to knock all that out, have a really concise and coordinated plan instead of after six weeks, like, oh, what did I talk about in that first one? And you start going over yeah. information that's already been wow. been given. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. And so... By setting that expectation that every Monday night you're going to upload it at five o'clock, people can look for it. Um, there's ways to uh, to quote unquote spoof live video, so you can actually upload it as a live video as it's happening, uh, even though it's pre-recorded. Um, we recommend that with uh, with any type of class where 
if it's going to be a 15 minute quote unquote live video, you can actually monitor it and actually respond to people as they're talking, even though the video is playing by itself. So that way it doesn't take away from the video. Um, and so that's a great way to, to build that trust and to actually show that you're engaged with people. Um, and uh, yeah. So, so how do they spoof that? Is it use, do you use a program or what do you, what do, you do? So um, we personally use a program. I believe that Facebook has a way to uh, do a, a premiere or something like that. So where you can actually say, hey, I want this video to upload and go live at this time in the future. Um, I don't know if that's still active or not. I don't know if they're still doing it, but we use a, a, a free software called OBS, which is yeah. an open broadcasting yeah, system or source. Uh, and it's fantastic because you can link right into your Facebook account and, and just stream live right from OBS and all that pre-recorded stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. I use OBS to do my screen recordings and my videos. So I didn't know you can actually, that's another tool. Okay, cool. Yeah, you can do green screen with OBS. You can yeah, upload awesome. it as a live video even though it's been pre-recorded. It's, it's, OBS is fantastic for being free. Right, yeah. You can't complain with free. OBS didn't pay me to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Not sponsored. All right. Unless they want us to. Great. Do you have any? Do you have any other tips or strategies that you can share with us as far as branding yourself and making making that? So when you are ready to sell, or, or when your people come to you to with leads and deals, that you'd recommend? Uh, as far as branding yourself, people are going to hate me uh, because I don't I don't spend a dime on online advertising. Uh, which I guess in the realtor world uh, and real estate in general, spending thousands of dollars on Facebook marketing converts to like half of a percent of uh, closing. So um, I would say invest in things that that you can continue utilizing over and over and over, uh, whether that's, you know, a shirt with your logo on it or wrapping your vehicle or uh, or doing videos. Um, the great thing about videos is you can always chop them up and kind of reorganize them and create a new video with the existing content. So if you film something over the course of a day, you could keep recycling that for the next year and you're not having to put any more money into it. So that would be my best marketing tip hmm. is uh, Facebook ads and Instagram and YouTube, they have their place. I'm not going to say they don't work, but uh, investing your money into something that you can continue to utilize over and over and over like a course where you can keep every six weeks, just restart it and hit a different market. I think that's far more valuable. That's a good idea. I like I like the course idea. That's really smart. And doing it all in one day, because people the people complain about not having enough time. Not have time to do. I can't upload every every Tuesday or whatever. You know, but if it's already done, you just sacrifice one day, and then you have content for the next year potentially. For you know, sure. If you just repeat it, like you're saying so. It makes it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And the only thing that will change is if uh, if you wanted to do market updates. Oh, hey, you know we're gonna do a market update. Right? You can't do that for the next year all in one day. Those are right. the things that take time, uh, or you know big changes in the industry, or you know a new and up up and coming development or whatever. But for the most part, uh, compliance stuff doesn't change overnight. And so if you create something now, it's probably gonna be valid for the next year. And what kind of courses do you think off the top of your head that uh, would be enticing for an audience to learn about? Like maybe, I don't know, maybe like like the steps to prevent foreclosure or, or to, I don't know, do you have anything in mind? For for the real estate aspect yes, of it? Yes, yeah. Um, some really common ones that we do currently that we've worked with other realtors on is like what to expect in the home buying process, uh, your, what to expect in the closing process as a buyer or as a seller. So the things that are going to happen on both sides. Um, we've done uh, courses on like how to get your home ready for uh, to be listed. So little things like the paint on the wall. You know, if you can match that paint and put a little water in it, then it'll actually fade it a little bit, so it'll look more natural, like it's supposed to be there. It costs fifty cents to change an outlet cover. That makes all the difference. You know, th these little types of things are great for videos. Uh, so it eliminates the amount of work that. Uh, a realtor has to do when they're talking to the person listing. They can say, hey, here's a video that's already done uh, and they can watch it and they'll tell them all the things they need to go through whereas a realtor could take two hours for every single listing to go through all of that. So right. uh, that's great uh, as well as you know just what to expect and, and to uh, eliminate any type of 
preconceived notions that may not be true, like with investing. You yeah, know, yeah. every every real estate investor is a scam artist, or you know, they 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 really don't do anything. They just take your money, or, or whatever it is. But having a video that actually addresses that just up front and says, "Hey, this is what the process is. This is this is why we have that reputation," and it's just uh, some people aren't understanding the whole process. And and being able to to educate them, I think, is a great way. To, to utilize video. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And, yeah. it, and it would be more than just one video. I mean, if you had a, sure. an ongoing course of, hey, you know, if you're going to get into investing, these are the first things that are going to happen. You know, you're going to meet with, with a team or you're going to meet with people that want to invest their money. And these are the things you're going to be asked and these are the things you're going to know and, and just really dive into it. So yeah. I think those are really valuable uh, videos, whether you do them professionally or on a phone or on a YouTube channel. And, and even if it's recorded on the phone, you become, when you're putting out the content and it's good content and it's good information, you become the the field expert in that for a lot of these people. You know, I mean, if I didn't know anything about what I need, if I'm going to list my property and I have no idea what I need to get ready for, watching a realtor or investor talking about the things you need to do to, to, to get your, your, your property ready, um, like, okay, so this guy knows, he's, knows what he's talking about. If I want to list or I, want, or I have a property to sell, I'm going to contact that that person so that makes that makes a lot of sense yeah and and by having your face out there again like we talked about earlier it makes you approachable you're a real person and you can build that trust with people you've never met right. I mean there's uh, there's YouTube channels that I watch for the film industry of people that I will never meet but I trust them based on their experience and based on the results that they've had and so uh, I know that it's better than me reading a book by somebody that I've never seen. You know, I can actually see this person and be like, "Oh, I know who that person is." More and, personal. And for sure, I, I I would like to think that when they're walking down the street and I ran into them, they'd be like, "Oh, hey, Marcus, what's up?" They have no clue who I am, right? But I know who they are, and that's the same thing with creating videos for for your channel. Right. Now let's just say let's just change subject a little bit. So uh, let's just say I'm about to list a property or I'm an investor. I'm going to sell it. I want to sell it my own, or or you know uh, what. What things should we look for uh, in in a photographer that we're gonna that's gonna take pictures of our of our property? Past work. Okay. And, so, I, and I, I say that is in uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm I'm gonna start laying landmines for all my competition out yeah, there, right? Yeah. Uh, the things that we always recommend if you're gonna work with a photographer the first time is ask to see not only their past work but any current listings that are actually on the market mm. um, to show that they're actually still doing stuff. Ask to talk to some of their past clients and ask what that experience is like. Was a photographer on time? Were they respectful of the property? Did they track mud in? Did they bang up the walls with their tripod? Were they rude? Um, those, those are two big ones. Also, right. find out exactly what's included with the cost if you're going to hire them because some photographers say, uh, you know, I'll shoot your property and then it's 50 bucks. And then when you get the photos, you're like, oh, wow, these windows are really blown out. You know, I can't really see through them. Oh, you want HDR windows? That's another $100. Oh, you want it in 48 hours? That's another $50. And so pretty soon they're going to nickel and dime you, and there's going to be all these different fees. Yeah. Uh, so find out up front what they're offering. Some some offer virtual tours and brochures. Some don't offer any of that. It just depends on what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But the number one thing is talk to their past clients. Uh, it's really hard for a new real estate photographer to get into the business. I've been there. I get it. Uh, but there's... Uh, there's something to be said about looking at the past work and, and the past experiences. So I'm just curious because there may, may be one or two photographers listening to this uh, just by the, the, the title of the podcast. My name's not Marcus C. <laughs> 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 well, uh, what, what, how did you get past that? You know, from, you know, in a short amount of time to doing over 100, you know, real estate projects, um, how did you get your foot in the, deal, the door to have some distrust to you? Like, yeah, sure, take pictures, you know? So... My re <laughs> let's let's talk about from the beginning when I started doing real estate. Um, everybody that has a uh, a digital camera is a real estate photographer, <laughs> like right. every single person out there, including me when I started. And, and I I am not ashamed at the fact that I didn't misrepresent myself, but I didn't have the skills that I was trying to make people believe I did. Right, mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't have the correct lens. I had a really crappy camera. I did a bunch of shoots for realtors uh, for free to try to build my portfolio, and none of them called me back. <laughs> so uh, if any of them are listening, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, but what, what ended up happening was I realized I needed better equipment. 
so then I got a wide angle lens with a crappy camera, which that improved, you know, my, my shots drastically. And it was charging very little. If, if I do free projects, it doesn't give me enough value that people want me back. Right. But if I charge, you know, hey, if I tell people, I'm just starting out, I'm trying to build a portfolio, I want to I wanna do a, a shoot for you for like 25 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever. And uh, if you like it, you know, you agree to give me a review. If you don't like it, you still give me a review because that's the way I'm going to learn, right? And so I think that really helped is trading uh, a very low cost for a project for a review, just about my interactions really helped because then I was able to actually leverage those reviews and say, hey, I haven't worked a lot in this industry, but I've worked with these people and here's the reviews from them and they're recent within the past couple of weeks or months yeah. and then I can start building up projects that way. And then from there, it was just, uh, it was just a hustle. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it wasn't undercutting other photographers or anything like that. It was just always kind of being in their face and saying, hey, you know, I'm still here. I still want to do this. You know, I'm still trying to build a reputation. Right. That's cool. Yeah, I, it is a nightmare. I, I remember a, a year ago you did a photo shoot for me, and you actually drove out an hour out of your way uh, just to do the shoot in, in in the flip I was working on. You know, so I mean that, and you were cheap too. So I was like, this guy's great. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a year ago. I'm sure. I mean, obviously, I'm sure your prices have risen since then. But um, the next time you hire us, we're gonna back bill you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Travel time and everything right. else. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was great great work and and uh, yeah okay. And, you, like and your experience with us was, I hope it was good. I it mean, was. I'm here now, but right. <laughs> but that's that's the one thing we've always put put first is even if we have to eat the cost on a project to make it right, uh, and even today with with my company, that's that's what it's built off of. And so I think that goes a lot further than having good, you know, better prices or lower prices is just knowing that the client will get taken care of. So right. It's, it's a tough industry to, to break into. If there's any photographers or videographers out there trying to break into the industry, uh, get a hold of Jared. He can get a hold of me, and <laughs> I will uh, either discourage you or help you. But, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a tough market to get into for sure. And well, how, do, how would people get a hold of you? Uh, so they can check out my company website, which is uh, www.arieland360.com. And Ariel is spelled A-E-R-I-A-L. Then the word and, A-N-D, and the number is 360.com. Uh, they can get a hold of me there. They can uh, actually text or call our corporate number, which is uh, an 866 number. It's 866-631-2360. Um, if you text to that number, it will still get to me, and uh, and I can offer advice. I, I'm not opposed to helping other people be successful. I think there's plenty of business out there. Um, but uh, it's good to set that expectation of it's a it's a tough industry to get into. Right. And we'll have that uh, your contact information on the website, How to Real Estate Podcast website. So okay. That's how you can reach them. Yeah, it's exciting. Awesome. Uh, any other uh, tips or thoughts before we? Uh... I want to go back to branding for a okay. second. Okay. Yeah. So um, you, I'm guessing you do headshots. Uh, for agents and stuff like that, how often should an agent or an investor or anybody really be updating their headshots? If they're paying us every week. <laughs> <laughs> every day. <laughs> right, every single day. No, um, the reality of it is a couple times a year. Uh, a you, couple times a year? Yeah. And, and the reason is, is because people change. People lose weight. People get different haircuts. People, you know, get tattoos or whatever. And uh, having an updated headshot is one of the, it's the first thing people are going to see right. on any website. That's what they're expecting. For so. sure. And so if I use a headshot from last year, I mean, I, I've drastically changed. Whether it's last year I had longer hair or shorter hair or I've gained weight or lost weight, they, they may be able to say, hey, oh, that's, you know, he looks like the person, but I want them to be able to say, hey, that's the person that I'm, I'm meeting with today, or that's the person I'm going to see. Not like 10 years. I see people that have, <laughs> I see people that have headshots that are like from, you know, 15 years ago, and yeah. they, they look they young, look and now they're like, they got gray beards, uh, and I'm like, what I don't happened? even know who you are. Right? <laughs> right. So, but realistically, I would say a minimum of once a year, ideally uh, probably twice a year, um, and it's not that you have to go out and, and get crazy headshots or anything like that but just even uh, an updated photo is way better than having something that people won't recognize and well and it's good to have uh, a lot of pictures uh, because then you can use it for marketing you can use it for different things it's not just a headshot you can use it 
and other things. For sure. And like with Jared, when we actually did the headshot shoot, we actually shot a bunch of other poses at the same time. And so it was, you know, it's all within that same time frame. If, if we're going to be there for an hour, you know, it doesn't take an hour to shoot headshots. That's right. an insanely long amount of time just to shoot headshots. But uh, we were able to say, hey, let's shoot the headshots, let's shoot some marketing poses, and uh, pretend you're holding something, pretend you're standing on something or whatever, and then he can utilize those all year. And you know, if he changes drastically throughout the year, that's okay with the marketing, but getting an updated headshot would still probably be. Right. How so long I, ago was that? So I grew a beard. I was, was going to say. A year ago. A year ago? Yeah, I was like in January or something. So you're due for a new one? Yeah, I'm due yeah, for a new one. Yeah. yeah. When was your last one? <laughs> Mine was two years ago. Oh, look, look at him, right? Two <laughs> years ago. I know. Look so, at him. So what? Next Tuesday, we're good. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All, all at once. But uh, <laughs> we get a two for one. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. If it fits in that hour, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, realistically, I mean, to be like a hundred percent honest with with when you should get them updated. Anytime you change, whether it's tattoos, you get longer hair. I mean, I wouldn't get a headshot every inch of hair you get but right. if last year you had a an a-line cut and this year you have like sh super short hair or something like that you should probably have an updated headshot yeah I, i've been on like when I, I especially as an investor you talk to a lot of realtors and so i see their their shot as we were talking before like 20 30 like it looks like it was taken in the 70s <laughs> and it's this young person and his grandma i'm talking to him like what, the? what happened i understand you look nicer <laughs> then but really right. just gotta keep things updated and, and as a realtor or any business professional, I think you just need to kind of own who you are. Like, right. if you lost all your teeth because you didn't brush them, you, sh you should have a headshot that reflects that, you know, right. because that's who you are. If you have a headshot with all your teeth and you show up without all your teeth, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting conversation. Right. So. And maybe that's what they want. An interesting conversation. Yeah, maybe that, that's the, well, the way it, it, the conversation. Well, it kills trust, though. It kills, yes, it I does. mean, when, when I'm expecting something, that you promise, whether you not not physically promise, but from your presentation, right. and you come up with something different, like if you're saying you're if I immediately off the bat, yeah, you're already yeah, like oh this person's shady. Why are they lying about what they look like? And that goes back to even real estate photos. Like we don't uh, we don't in, quote unquote enhance any of our photos. Um, they're shot. Okay, you know, never mind. As you, <laughs> you, well, you, you, they're shot as you would see the house. Right. So like yeah. we won't uh, we won't patch a wall if it's not patched, and we aren't going to uh, you know change the color of the grass to bright green even though it's all <laughs> dead and brown. You know like. It's if somebody sees that photo and then goes to the house, then again, all that trust. Well, they lied about the photos. What else do they lie about? What else is exactly. going on in this house? Right. You know, and so it's the same thing with you know your face is your your real estate photo, the MLS photo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. I like I like the whole uh, building. I really one big takeaway for me is is doing uh, maybe a massive shoot one day and then just break it up and then be yeah. able to you know see my because I, I I'm I'm trying to do daily videos on my YouTube channel. And it's just, uh, it, it's pretty uh, cumbersome, and I already have a very busy schedule as it is. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> being a realtor, investor, uh, got a owning lot of business over here, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my lead generating company, and and then my painting company. It's just, it's just a little much. But I like the idea of just doing one, one big one, and yeah, just chopping it just, up. And and we always recommend uh, if you're going to do regular videos like that weekly or, or daily is pretty aggressive to yeah. be honest with you. I mean I don't know yeah. very many people that do daily videos that aren't like influencers making their money that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, is th what we always recommend is to have about six of them banked so then if something happens to you you get sick you can still keep putting them out. Does that make mm. sense? So uh, if, uh, if I have six videos already ready I might put launch the first one while I'm working on the seventh one. And then launch the eighth one while I'm working on the second one, and so then if I miss a couple weeks, I still have I still have content coming out, and that way it doesn't really interfere with the viewers or the subscribers or anything like that. Yeah, great tip. But also, if people are looking to uh, to hire anybody and they talk to me and I'm too expensive, that's completely fine. We have tons of other people that charge less that uh, they do uh, a job well enough that I would hire them on my crew. And so there's always those options. So if you can't afford What's me, Jared, yeah. <laughs> if you can't afford me, I can always get you to somebody that can. Um, and that's, you know, again, just about well, being and successful. Well, that's great because that you don't have many people that are going to want to send business elsewhere. So right. that, that's nice that you do that. Right. And I also get a referral fee. But, yeah. uh, but no, it's, it's nice because, again, just like the signs on the side of the road for investors, a lot of people have 
preconceived ideas as to what we would charge or how much it will cost. And a lot of times, it's not, not that way at all. If it, if it is outside of their budget, we have a network of people we can refer them to. Nice. That's awesome. And that, that's going to bring more people to you anyway. So that's, that's a good method to take any business, to, for that matter. You know, like maybe something doesn't work from you, but I, got, I, I know a guy that, that can. And so people are going to be more inclined to go to you as opposed to just try and going off. Well, we, we moved past that point of, you know, uh, nickel and diming people and scram like clamoring for any type of business we can get. We've gotten to this point where it's like, if we don't get business, uh, it will eventually hurt us by not getting business. But if we don't get business from one or two individuals, it's not going to put us out of business. Right. And so we can provide a better experience and still maintain the direction we're going. Well, it's having that abundance mindset. That's that's the biggest thing. You know, a lot of people in any industry, but I, I see the scarcity mindset in the real estate industry more than, than I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm in it, but more than, than most industries, like, oh, that's the only deal I can get. And, and But when you have that abundance mindset, there's plenty of deals out there. You're okay to let one go or you don't get so emotionally attached to one deal and you make a bad decision and lose money on, like my first deal. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's really... Uh, Important to have that abundant mindset, and it seems like you have that 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 mindset, so it's good. Well, success yeah. breeds more success. So if I can Amen. make other people successful, then when my company goes out of business, they'll hire me. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be a plan. All right. You have all business sent you. Give me a job. Right. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you for uh, listening to uh, How to Real Estate. Um, so make sure to pay to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching it on on YouTube, um, and follow us. Leave a comment. Uh, give us a good review. Five star review, please. Uh, and that's it. Anything else? Got anything, Jen? Nope. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. We hope you liked that podcast. Stay tuned for next Monday for a brand new podcast and a brand new guest. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share.